Hi everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making these winter chic slippers. These are like slipper socks. They are so comfortable. They are 100% merino wool, so they are going to keep your feet warm in this blustery cold weather that we're having um, in Wisconsin. So it's definitely freezing outside already. Um, so this is a great project, a quick and easy project, and actually it is uh, great for the holidays for somebody who always has cold feet <laughs> or uh, somebody on your gift giving list. So I'll get into the supplies we need and I'll answer some frequently asked questions about sizing and we will get into making these slippers. So big thank you to Red Heart Yarns and Marley Bird for providing the yarn today. This is Red Heart Chic Sheep Yarn by Marley Bird. It is 100% merino wool so it is going to keep your feet very warm. This is extremely soft yarn. Yeah, there's the wool right there from that sheep. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> we are using three different colors today. Um, these are um, very, this is super soft yarn, you guys. I'm obsessed with it. I just got to try it. This is the first time I'm trying it and it's brand new yarn. It just came out in, uh, I think it was like late October, early November. So it's like brand new. And I'm using three different colors. I'm using linen. Here's linen. I'm using Sunset, there's Sunset, and my main color is Suede. You can use any colors you want, but these are the three colors I will be demonstrating with today. For the amount of yarn you are going to need for your main color, I would get three skeins of this. We are using two strands of yarn at the same time. So each of these balls of yarn is 186 yards, and I used three skeins of my main color, which came out to be about 500 yards of yarn, okay? So three skeins of the main color. Then these two other colors, you just need one skein of each of these colors. Okay, it came out to be about 180 yards that I ended up using um, and I had a little bit of left over. So uh, just one skein of each of your accent colors and then three skeins of your main color is what you'll need. This um, whole project takes 860 yards of yarn because we're using two strands at the same time. That's why it's so, so much. Um, so so if you don't want to use this specific yarn, if you're allergic to merino wool or whatever the case is, you can use any worsted weight or double knitting yarn. Um, this yarn is a size 4 medium yarn. It's 100% wool, but like I said, you can use any acrylic or wool yarn that is a size 4 medium or a worsted weight or double knitting yarn. So um, any soft yarn that you really want to use. But we're using two strands of yarn at the same time, and I will show you that in the tutorial. So that is the yarn. It is so soft. I keep saying that because it is so incredibly soft. It's going to be so nice on your feet. Wear your bare feet inside, put socks on inside, and just keep cozy. And we're making cluster stitches to Today. So these uh, bobbles just will, it's really thick and um, really nice and soft. So there's that. We are using an H size crochet hook that's five millimeters. And this specific hook I got from the Etsy shop would be fancy. I will put a link in the description of this video for this fabulous hook where you can get hooks like this. It's ergonomic, hand carved, handcrafted, and super popular right now, especially for the holidays too. You could make, I mean, if you love somebody who crochets, you can give them a hook, make them snake nice slippers, or give them the yarn and tell them to make you these slippers <laughs> with this crochet hook. So it's awesome for the holidays. So I'll put a link for the in the description to get this um, crochet hook and that yarn uh, where you can get that. Also, you're going to need a scissors and a yarn needle. We are cutting our yarn, sewing pieces together, sewing things in and um, tightening up our, our loose ends here. And then I have my cute little sheep here for our measure tape. Measure tape is a good thing to have just to measure your feet and measure your piece, uh, how big you want it to be. Throughout this video, I, in the written pattern, I do not have different sizes for this video, but we'll get into the frequently asked questions now. Sizing, how can you make this smaller or bigger? These slippers I am going to demonstrate are a size seven and a half to eight women's US size, okay? 
it and this pattern is in US terms um, but you can make this as long or short as you want to make it for your own foot so say you have a bigger foot than a size 8 you can increase the rows the amount of rows uh, for the sole and you can increase the amount of rows for the top of the foot as well uh, and I show that how to do that in each section of this video so first we're gonna start with this cuff and if your if your leg is uh, more wider than mine uh, my calf muscle is about 12 and a half almost 13 inches around at the largest part of my calf so if you need to you can measure around your calf muscle and if it's bigger or smaller than that just um, chain and it's an even number so any even number that measures around your leg and that's for this part. Then for this part, it's uh, however far along up top here, how far from your toes to your ankle that is, and you can increase or decrease if you have more or less space. And again, the measure tape comes in handy to measure that out, as well as for the sole of your shoe here. We are making this in rows and this row these rows here are just a repeat so you can increase or decrease if your uh, shoe or your foot is shorter or longer at the bottom there so and I explain that in each section of this video on um, how to make these longer or shorter if you have bigger or smaller feet than I do but these will fit me so that's why I, I made them for myself because I wanted to make something for myself <laughs> my feet are always cold so that is the frequently ask questions and uh, that's the yarn I'm using today. If you have any more questions about these, you can always contact me on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube here. Comment to this video. Just uh, check out the links in the description of this video to my website where you'll get the free written pattern. I have ads on my website so if you want the ad free version you can purchase the pattern on my Etsy shop and get that there otherwise uh, and then you can download it and you know save it in your computer and print it off. And uh, check out my Facebook, Instagram. Make sure to share hashtag yarn utopia if you make these. It was super fabulous and I would love to see what colors you choose and if you use the chic sheep yarn. So big thank you to my dad for videotaping and editing this and big thank you to Red Heart and Marley Bird for this yarn and big thank you to you for watching. So let's get started and make the winter chic slippers. All right, we're gonna start off with our main color and we are going to use the two strands at the same time, like I said in the beginning here. So we're going to put the two strands together like this and we're gonna start off with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, just like that, then fold this down, okay? And then pull your long end through that loop, okay? Just like this and pull tight. And there's your slip knot. Now we're going to insert our hook and begin. So we're going to start off by chaining an even number that fits around your leg, around your calf, okay? So like the calf muscle, um, where you want the top of your slipper to fit. So I am going to chain 36. So yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over pull through three I won't make you watch me chain 36 uh, or j just chain an even number that will fit around your calf muscle your leg and I will meet you up when I have chained 36 all right, so I've chained 36 here, so this is what your chain should look like. So what I ended up doing was um, wrapping this around my leg just to make sure that it did fit. I also measured around my leg and it turned out to be 12 and a half inches. So what I ended up doing was just measuring then uh, 12 and a half inches on here. And you want to make sure that it actually is stretched. 12 and a half inches or however long yours is. If yours is, you know, 13, 14 inches around or something, just chain an even number and then kind of stretch this out to fit. And this is a quite stretchy yarn, as you can see. It's got a lot of buoyancy to it. So you can see here it measures uh, about 13 inches, which will be nice because I can even wear a sock uh, inside the slipper as well. So just make sure that this wraps around your leg and is comfortable. Now we can go on to row one. 
we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and all the way across. So the loop on the hook doesn't count as a chain. So this counts as our first chain and then this counts as our second chain right there. So we're gonna single crochet in there. Let's turn the chain toward us though. This is what I personally like to do, is turn the chain toward me, and then work in these back ridges of the chain, okay? So the second chain here, one and two, this right here, we're gonna go in to that back ridge, then yarn over and pull through. Make sure you're getting both of those yarns on there, just like that. And then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Okay, that is a single crochet. So we're just going to single crochet across this chain. So just go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops, just like that. So go into the next, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just going to do this all the way across this chain, just single crochet. At the end of this row, you will have an odd number of stitches. So I will actually have 35 single crochets at the end of row one. Yours may be different if you chain a different amount. So just a single crochet across here and I will meet you up for row two. All right, just finishing up row one here. Like I said, I'll have 35 single crochets at the end of this row. Now we can go on to row two. So let's chain up three, one, two, and three. This is going to count as our first stitch of this row. So let's turn our work around like this. Okay, so like I said, that's gonna count as our first double crochet. And we are going to put a five double crochet cluster in the very next stitch. So not this very first stitch right here, because this stitch, this chain up three is counted as a stitch and it's worked in this stitch here. So let's hop to this stitch right here, this very next one. We're gonna make a five double crochet cluster in there. So to do that, we are going to yarn over, go into that stitch, then yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two loops. But hold these two loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over, go back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, but now we have three loops on the hook. Keep those three loops on your hook. We're gonna do this again. <laughs> yarn over, go back in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and we wanna do this until there are five in here. So there's one, two, three so far in there. We gotta do two more. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, there's another one and one more. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So now you should have six loops on your hook. Let's count here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and if you need to, if you can see I'm kind of like pulling these up, stretching them out, you can do that too. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all six of those loops. Okay, just like that. So that is a cluster stitch. And now to close this cluster stitch, we're just going to chain one. So yarn over and pull through, just like that. Now you can see this is what it should look like. If you want to, you can push your thumb in the middle of that stitch to kind of poke it through to the other side. And you can see that it kind of bulges out then on this other side like that. And that's gonna be kind of like our bobble stitches. Okay, now what we're going to do is uh, skip the next stitch right here. Okay, and make a five double crochet cluster into the next stitch right here. So again, yarn over. So we're skipping this one right here, going into this next one here. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And do that five times until you have six loops on your hook. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. <laughs> You're gonna hear me say that a lot <laughs> in this video. There's one, two, three, four. One more here is five. So you should have six loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yarn over, pull through all six loops. And then to close this, just chain one. 
and then you can shove your thumb in there to kind of push it through to the other side and it should turn out like a bobble. Awesome. So we're just going to do that all the way across this row here. So skip the next stitch, then make your five double crochet cluster in the next stitch, then chain one to close it, and then skip the next stitch and make your five double crochet cluster in the next and so on. So if you need to, you can rewind this to see what I was doing, um, but just repeat what uh, that sequence is. You can follow along with the written pattern, which is linked in the description of this video, if you need to as well. Uh, but I'm just gonna do that and then I will meet you up at the end of this row. We are going to change color. All right, I'm just finishing row two here. I gotta make a, another um, bobble stitch here real quick. One, two, three, four, and five. So you should have one stitch left here, okay? What we're going to do, make sure you make your last little cluster stitch here, and then chain one, okay? And then we're just gonna put a double crochet in that last stitch. So yarn over, go into the very last stitch. You don't even, you don't have to skip any stitches. There should just be one stitch left. We're going to double crochet in there. So go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops, okay? And there is row two. Now what we're going to do, we're going to change color, but I'm going to fasten off first. Okay, so I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to cut this yarn and I'm going to cut it a little bit longer, about, I would say about six inches like this because we're going to use this for sewing later. So cut it there and then pull this through and pull tight. We're going to use these strands for sewing, okay, so make sure not to cut it too short. Okay, so if you turn your work around, you can see that the cluster is made more of like a bobble stitch, and you can see the dimension of that really nicely on this side. And this is the outside of the slipper. This is where you're going to see that dimension really nicely. So turn your work so you're looking at them like this, and we're going to insert our hook into this very last stitch of our last row right here. So this is going to be our first stitch. So go in there and we're going to attach our next color. So I'm using sunset and I'm using the two strands at the same time. We're just going to hook that on our hook like that and then pull it through. Okay. And then drop those little, those two little loose ends out in the back there. And then we're going to chain up three or I'm sorry, chain up one. <laughs> We've got a single crochet across here. So we're going to single crochet into the same stitch that we just attached to, this very first stitch. So go into there, then yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. There's our first single crochet. Now we are going to single crochet in between these clusters, but we're gonna put two single crochets in between. So skip through this first one here just go in between these two clusters right here. In this chain one space, we're going to put two single crochets. So one, go back in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and there's two. Then separate these two next clusters here and put two single crochets in between those ones. So one and two. And we're just going to put two single crochets now between each cluster stitch in the chain one spaces between them. Okay, so one and two. And just do that all the way across. And when I'm finishing this row, I'll show you how to finish row three and then we can go on to row four. When you're finishing row three, you see there's this cluster stitch here and then this chain up three here. What we're going to do to end row three, we're going to single crochet between this cluster stitch and this chain up three stitch here. So go put a single crochet between them. And then we're going to single crochet into the chain up three here. So into the, the third chain here, you can see one, two, three, right at the top just insert your hook. If you want to, you could just put two single crochets in that last space or single crochet 
in the space and then single crochet at the top of the chain up three for a cleaner edge there. And you should have the same amount of stitches on row three as you do for row one, which is for me 35 single crochets on this row. Okay, so that is how it should look. All right, so now at this point, I am going to leave you on your own. I will explain how to do the next repeat part. So this next row, <clears throat> excuse me, row four, we are working with the sunset color and we are going to repeat row two with these cluster stitches, okay? So just rewind this to see how I started and ended row two, okay? We're gonna make these cluster stitches on row four. Then after that, we're going to change color, and I'm going to use this linen color for the th uh, third color that I have, and we are going to then repeat for row five, repeat row three, and just repeat rows two and three, switching colors every two rows, okay? So rows one and two were with suede, rows... Um, Three and four are with sunset, rows five and six will be with linen, and then row seven and eight will be with row, uh, suede, then sunset, then linen, and so on and so forth. So every two rows we are switching color, and when you're finished, don't look at the whole thing here, but you can see this is how it will turn out. So we have rows one and two, three and four, five and six, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then I, when I'm finished with row 18, I will meet you up because we're going to do the top cuff then. So this is how it's going to look, all right? So just repeat rows 2 and 3 for however long you want this part of your slipper to be. When we meet back up, I'll show you how to make this top part, and then we'll go on to making the foot part as well. So I've obviously have one done off camera here, but um, just repeat this sequence until the leg part of your slipper is as long as you want it to be. I am going to repeat it until I have three sections. Okay, so here's this um, three color changes. So one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm just going to do this and then I'll meet you up. Just repeat rows two and three. And when I'm done with that, I'll meet you up and we'll go on to the next step. All right, when you're finished with row 18, we are going to fasten off just like we did uh, for row two, just as a repeat. So we, row 18 was a repeat of row two. So just fasten that off. And it's like we're changing color again. And if you want to, you can continue to make as many rows as you want. But the outside of this looks like this. It looks super fabulous already. All the texture is so lovely. So this is what your piece should look like. But like I said, if you wanted to have more of the repeat, uh, you can continue uh, making this as long as you want to to fit around your leg. So what we're going to do, we're looking at the inside here. We are going to wrap this around like this so that the right side, this is the outside of your slipper, is facing each other. Folding it in half like this. Make sure to fold it all in half. Okay, and we're gonna sew this together now, like up this seam here. We're gonna sew this all together to close it so it's like a cuff, okay? So what we're going to do, let's get our yarn needle. Okay, we're gonna start at this color here and like I said earlier, when we fastened off each color, we fastened off with a long tail. We're going to use that for sewing, okay? And remember to use two strands at the same time. I know I didn't mention it uh, more than once, so just be sure to use two strands of yarn at the same time throughout this whole project. So anyway, I'm yarning my needle with this first color. We're going to sew together each color. Now, if you don't mind having just like um, one color down the back, you can sew it all together with one color and then just weave in all these ends. But I'm just going to sew them in to each corresponding color. So the suede color, we're just going to whip stitch, just go into this side and then into this side. Okay, and then just come back around and just line it up. 
and we're just going to wrap around three times per section. Okay, so into here and out here. Okay, before we fasten this off. So to fasten this part off, what we're going to do is wrap around, just go into like two stitches here, keep your finger in this loop and then pull that through. Okay, and then come back around through this loop, remove your finger and then pull it tight. And that creates a knot. And you can do that once or twice. And then what I'm going to do is just continue on by sewing in this end underneath at the base of these stitches, of these cluster stitches. Okay, so we're sewing this together up this seam and we are sewing it inside out, okay, because when we flip it back around, then everything will be hidden. And we also have to sew in the extra straggler. If you want to, you can also, if you're just going to sew in this end here, there should be, there will be two ends. So the one we're sewing them together, and then this one just needs to be sewn in. And you can sew this one in however you'd like. So really, just hide this other one. You don't have to like sew the two, the seam together or anything with the second one here. So I'm just gonna sew that in, stretch it out. So I've sewed in this one, I've sewed in this one. I'm going to snip any extra, just like that. Okay, so that's attached. So then we can just move on to the next one. So you want to sew these together using the one where you fastened off, okay? The starting straggler, you're just gonna sew that in, okay? So this, this fastening off straggler, next color here, we're just gonna yarn our needle and do the same thing that we just did to this suede color. So now I'm on the sunset color, so I'm just gonna go around three times and then fasten it off and then sew in this end and sew in this other end here. Okay, and I'm gonna do that for each color going up this whole seam here. So all these ends will be sewn in and the seam will be closed by the time I get to the top there. Once that's all done, then I'm going to meet you back up and we'll go on to making the top cuff. All right, just finished here. So this is what your cuff should look like. You can see I seamed it up right here. And then if you want to, you can, well, regardless, you should <laughs> turn it right side out. So it's just like a tube right now, just like that. So you can see the back seam right here. Now this is the back of the slipper, so you can see the seam, but um, this is the back side, so you won't see that. This is the front here. So now what we need to do, make sure the suede is at the bottom. Okay, like this, suede is at the bottom, linen is at the top, or your main color is at the bottom, and your third color is at the top, okay? So what we're going to do is turn it to the back so you can see the seam. Okay, we're gonna attach our yarn right between these little uh, uh, cluster stitches. Now you can start, you can see here's our chain up three and here's our last double crochet. So if you wanna insert your hook into that double crochet stitch, we're basically going to be repeating um, row, which one was it? The single crochet row, row three, okay? I'm gonna grab suede or the main color here. Let me grab it real quick. Remember two strands of yarn at the same time hook that on and pull it through that stitch. Okay, so like I said, we're basically going to repeat row three here. Let's chain up one and single crochet into this stitch where we attach to. So go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, just like that. Then we're gonna put two single crochets in each space between our cluster stitches. So right down in here, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Go back in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And just put two single crochets in between each um, cluster stitch. Okay, so do that all the way around. I'll meet you up when I'm finishing. I'll show you how to finish this around 
now we're working in rounds, not rows. <laughs> so um, that's what you'll see in the written pattern. The top cuff is in rounds. So this is round one. And I'm just putting two single crochets between each cluster and I'll show you how to finish round one and then we'll go on to round two. All right, so finishing this round, just like we finished round, uh, row three, was that row three? Yeah, row three. We are going to single crochet between this cluster and this last chain up three stitch right there. So single crochet in there and then put a single crochet into that chain up three there. Okay, just like that. And now, since we are working in rounds, we are going to slip stitch to the first single crochet stitch right here. So go in to this first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and pull through that loop on your hook, just like that. So you should, for this round, you should have 35 stitches, again, or the same amount of stitches you had for your single crochet rows in this top, or in this cuff part here. So I have 35 stitches. So now, going on to round two of the top cuff, we are going to chain up two. One and two, but that does not count as anything, okay? We are going to double crochet into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. So yarn over, go back into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into right here and chained up two in. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. Okay, that's our double crochet. We're going to double crochet into each stitch on this round, okay, for a total of 35 double crochets. All right, so we're just double crocheting in each stitch uh, for round two, and I'll meet you up, and we'll finish this round together, and then we'll go on to round three of the top cuff. All right, finishing round two, just got a double crochet in this last stitch here, and now we are going to slip stitch to the first double crochet, okay? So ignore this chain up two right here. One, two, ignore that, go into the first double crochet stitch right there, go in and slip stitch. So yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Okay, and that was round two. Going on to round three, we are going to start like we did the last row, just chain up two one and two. But this round, we are going to work with front post double crochets and back post double crochets. So our first stitch is gonna work around this first double crochet stitch, okay? Not this chain up two right here, right below this chain up two. We're gonna go around this stitch here, and what we're going to do is yarn over, go on this side of the post, okay, around it, just like that, then yarn over, and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. And that is a front post double crochet. On this next stitch, we are going to do a back post double crochet. So yarn over, go behind your work on this side of the post, around to the other side, okay, to the back again, then yarn over, and pull it through just like that okay then yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two now that's a back post double crochet so we're going to alternate these two stitches so front post double crochet on this next stitch and then back post double crochet on the next stitch okay and then just alternate all the way around and then I'll meet you up here there we go I'll meet you up and uh, we'll go on to round four which is our last round of the top cuff all right just finishing round three here and finish off with a front post double crochet and then what we're going to do is slip stitch to the first front post double crochet stitch right here not this chain up two just like that last round, just uh, ignore that chain up two and go into the first stitch right there, slip stitch, so yarn over, pull through and through. Okay, now round four is just a repeat of round three. So just chain up two and alternate those stitches. So front post double crochet on the front post double crochet stitches and back post double crochet 
on the back post double crochet stitches and just alternate those two stitches all the way around to make your cuff. Um, you can go on to making rounds, you know, five, six, seven, however tall you want this part to be, you can continue on just repeating round three as many times as you want. But after round four, I am going to fasten this part off and then we can go on to making the foot part of our slipper. All right, just finishing round four here. Whoops, we're not in focus. There we go. All right, so now what we need to do is slip stitch to the first stitch right here, just like the last round. And we are going to fasten this part off. So chain one and then cut your yarn and then pull it all the way through that chain one there and pull it tight, just like that. And then we're just going to grab our yarn needle right away. It's best to just sew in your ends as you go so you don't have to do it way at the end of this project. So just go underneath a few of the stitches and just hide that end like that. Just going back and forth through these stitches. Okay, we're still going to work with the main color for the bottom part of the foot as well. So the suede color is my main color for my slippers. So I'm just going to snip that and then we're just going to set this aside and we're going to grab that yarn there. Okay, we're going to start making the sole of the uh, the booty part, the <laughs> shoe part here. So let's start with two strands of yarn. We are going to make a slip knot. I showed you how to make that in the beginning of this video. And we're going to start off by chaining four. So yarn over and pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, three, and four. Okay. Now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So the loop on the hook, again, doesn't count as anything. So count one and two right here. In this chain, I'm gonna turn it toward me. I like to work in those back ridges there. So let's go into that second chain, then yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, and in the next chain, single crochet just across this chain. So at the end of row one, you should have three single crochets. One, two, and three. Let's chain up one and turn the work around. And in this very first stitch right here, we are going to put two single crochets. Okay, in the very first stitch. So one, go back in for two. Then in the very next stitch, we're going to put one single crochet. And then in the very last stitch, we're going to put two single crochets. This very last stitch right here, put two. One and two. So at the end of row two, we're going to have five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's chain up one and turn the work around. For row three, we are going to increase again in this very first stitch right here. Okay, we're going to put two single crochets. So one, go back in for two. Now in the next three stitches, we are going to put just one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So this next stitch right here, just put one single crochet. In the next stitch, just put one single crochet. And in this next stitch. So there should be one stitch left. In the very last stitch right here, we're going to put two single crochets. One and two. Okay, just like that. So you should have seven stitches now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's chain up one and go on to the next row. Row four says to put two single crochets in the first stitch right here. Okay, one and two. And then one single crochet in the next five stitches. So in this next stitch here, here's one. Next stitch is two. 
next stitch is three here's four and five and there should be one stitch left in the very last stitch we're going to put two single crochets one and two so on this row uh, this is row four we should have nine stitches one two three four five six seven eight and nine let's chain up one turn our work around and just repeat that last row so just put two single crochets in the very first stitch okay for row five we're putting a single crochet in the next seven stitches so here's one next stitch two next stitch three here's four five six and seven there's one stitch left we're putting two single crochets in that last stitch right there and at the end of this row row five you should have eleven stitches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven down there okay so this is the width of your this will be the width of your foot now now for rows six through twenty seven i'm just going to chain one turn the work around and put one single crochet in each of the eleven stitches across that's it no increasing anymore just put one single crochet in each stitch across for 11 stitches on each row and that's rows 6 through 27 now if you have larger feet you can continue on to make this however long you need this to be and if you have smaller feet obviously you can stop sooner so I'm just going to single crochet across my rows here in each of the 11 stitches then chain one turn the work around and single crochet across okay so now I'm on row 12 here or I'm sorry row 7 here so uh, I'm just gonna do that until I finish row 27 and I will meet you up I'll again talk about different sizing for the sole of the uh, slipper and then when we're um, done with that row we have to then decrease because this comes in as an increase so then we're gonna do the opposite go on the other side we're gonna come in um, kind of decreasing to make it kind of round on top so I'll show you how to do that next all right so I just finished row 27 and I just measured this out here it measures about seven and a half inches um, right now so we're gonna decrease so it, the other side looks like this side where it comes in a little bit so you can measure your foot and uh, make sure if you need to if your foot is smaller I wear a size uh, seven and a half US size shoe then this is gonna fit me so um, I just need to do a couple more rows and or a few more rows actually and then we'll finish off this sole so going on to row 28 where we chain up one here turn the work around here and we're going to single crochet two together so we're gonna go into this very first stitch right here then yarn over and pull through and then hold those two loops on your hook go directly into the next stitch right there yarn over and pull that through so now we have three loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and that is a single crochet decrease or a single crochet two together stitch now we're going to single crochet in the next seven stitches just a regular single crochet oops make sure to loop on both strands here one two three four five six and seven you should see there's two stitches left we're gonna single crochet those two together so go into this next stitch yarn over pull through go into the last stitch yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and there is a single crochet decrease and now on the end at the end of row 28 you should have nine stitches so let's chain one and turn the work around and we're basically just going to repeat what we did for that row so a single crochet these first two stitches together so go into this first stitch right here yarn over and pull through go into the next stitch right here yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through all three loops there's your single crochet decrease and then we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches this row so one two three 
four and five. There should be two stitches left. Go into this next stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into the last stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops for a decrease. So at the end of um, row 29, you should have seven stitches. So let's chain up one and turn the work around. Row 30 says to do the same thing, single crochet two together. And then for this row, we're only single crocheting in three stitches. So this next stitch here, one, next stitch, two, and three. There should be two stitches left. We're going to single crochet those last two stitches together and then chain one and turn the work around. At the end of that row, you should have five stitches on that row. So chain up one, turn your work around. Our last row, row 31, we're going to single crochet two together then just put one single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet the last two stitches together. Just like that. And then we can fasten this off. So let's yarn over, pull through to chain one, cut your yarn and pull it through that chain one there and pull it tight. Okay, so there is the sole of your slipper. So you need to make another one of these. Oh, we'll make a whole nother slipper after, but um, just make sure that this fits the bottom of your foot. And if you needed to, like I said, though, this part here for these uh, repeat rows, rows 6 to 27. If you needed to make it longer, if you have a, a bigger foot or a smaller, um, you could have ended sooner for a smaller foot. So if you were making like a child or a toddler size, but this will fit me. I'm like a seven and a half, almost eight US size women's um, shoe. So that's going to fit my foot. So let me set this aside and we can make the top of the slipper. All right, for the top part of the foot, we're using the same color and the two strands like we used for the sole. So what we're going to do is start off with a slip knot. Okay, I showed you how to do that earlier. And we're going to start out by chaining four. So yarn over and pull through one, two, three, and four. And just like the sole, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in the next two chains here. So you'll have three stitches on row one. I'm going to go a little fast because it's a repeat of that first row of the sole. Okay, but row two is different here. We're going on to row two, so you should have three stitches on row one there. So chain up one, turn your work around. Row two, we are going to put two single crochets in each stitch across. So this very first stitch right here, put two single crochets. One, go back in for two. Okay, and hop to the next one put two single crochets in there. So at the end of row two, you should have six single crochets. And this last one right here, two single crochets, one and two. Okay, so I have my six stitches there. Let's chain up one and turn the work around. Row three, we are going to put two single crochets in the first stitch right here, one, and two. And then we're going to put one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So one, next stitch, two, next stitch, three, and four. And there should be one stitch left. We're going to put two single crochets in the last stitch. So at the end of row three, you'll have eight stitches, eight single crochets. Going on to the next row, row five, we are, or I'm sorry, row four. <laughs> Did I say that was row three or four? Anyway, <clears throat> the written pattern has all the information. I think my numbers are wrong. This is row three. You should have uh, eight stitches at the end of row three. So going on to row four now, we are going to chain up one and turn our work around. Sorry about that number mix up here. We're going to repeat what we did. So we're going to put two single crochets in the very first stitch. Okay. It's right here in, 
it kind of can get hit in there. So just make sure that you see that first stitch gets two single crochets, one and two. Okay, then uh, for row four, we're going to put one single crochet in the next six stitches. So one, here's two, three, four, oops, here's five, and six. So you should have one stitch left. So put a single crochet in each stitch until there's one stitch left. We're going to put two single crochets in that last stitch. So the first and last stitch should have two single crochets and each stitch in between should just have one. And that was the end of row four, so you should have 10 stitches on row four. Going on to row five now, chain up one and turn your work around. And we're gonna do the same thing. Put two single crochets in the first stitch and two single crochets in the last stitch and one single crochet in each stitch in between. Okay, we're gonna do that for this row, row five, and the next row, row six, and the next row, row seven, eight, and nine. So we're just repeating that until row nine. After row nine, we are going to have 20 stitches across. Okay, so this is row five I'm working on right now, and I'm going to have 12 stitches at the end of row five. I'm going to do the same thing for row six. Put two single crochets in the first stitch and two single crochets in the last stitch. Make sure to chain one when you're finished the row. Just like that, turn your work around. Two single crochets in the first stitch one single crochet in each stitch until there's one stitch remaining, and just put two single crochets in the last stitch. So I'm on row six right now. At the end of row six, I'm gonna have 14 stitches. At the end of row seven, I'm gonna have 16 stitches. At the end of row eight, I'll have 18 stitches. And at the end of row nine, I will have my 20 stitches across. So I'm going to do that, and when I finish row nine, I'm going to meet you up. We'll go on to row 10 together. All right, once you're finished with row 9, this is what it should look like. You should have your 20 stitches across, just repeating that sequence. So now, this is wide enough to go over the top of the toes here. So now we're just going to um, go on to row 10. And rows 10 to 24, we're just going to chain one and turn the work around. And just put one single crochet in each of the 20 stitches across. And that's it. So we're just single crocheting across. Now, row 10 through 24 will get me where this part here, this point, this is the toes, and then it'll go up over here. And this length then will get to my ankle. So it'll cover the whole top of my foot. Okay, so if your ankle comes, you know, sooner, if, you're, if your foot is smaller, you don't have to go all the way to row 24. Uh, if, it, if it's not to your ankle yet, you can continue on and do more rows. Just make this so that it fits the top of your foot, okay, right up to, from your toes to your ankle. And for me, like I said earlier, I'm with size 7.5, almost 8. US women's size and that will cover the top of my foot from my toes to my ankle the top of my foot Once you get to that point once I finish row 24 We're just putting a single crochet in each stitch across chain one turn your work and then single crochet across and You should have 20 stitches on each row and then once we get to uh, finishing row 24, I'll meet you up because we are going to um, split off then to go around the ankle. And I'll show you how to do that next. All right, this is what your piece should look like after row 24. Or like I said earlier, if you need to do more or less, um, you can do as many rows as you need to to get from your toes to your ankle. This is the top of the foot, so it's going to go around. It's going to round out like this. And the sole is going to fit underneath here. So now we need to just separate the two sides so that we have 
um, this side here and then this side here so that your ankle, it will fit around your ankle like this. So what we're going to do is go on to row one um, to divide for the leg opening. Uh, row one for the right side, we are going to chain one, turn our work around, and we're just going to single crochet into the first eight stitches. So right in this very first stitch here, we're just going to put a single crochet in the first eight stitches. So there's one, next stitch, two, next stitch, here's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're going to leave the rest of these stitches unworked. We're not going to work in those. We're just going to chain one. So yarn over and pull through, turn the work around. Okay. And for rows two through 12, we're just going to single crochet across these eight stitches and then chain one, turn your work and single crochet across for the next row. And I'm going to do that until I have 12 rows on this. So this is row two for the right side. Just single crocheted across. Going on to row three, chain one, turn the work around, and single crochet across. When I'm finished with row 12, I'll meet you up and we'll go on to making the other side. All right, just finished row 12 here. So this is what your piece should look like here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, so we're going to fasten this side off. So let's chain one here, cut your yarn, and then pull that all the way through and pull tight. Okay, now what we're going to do, I'm going to turn this around so that this is on the right side and we have our unworked stitches over here. We are going to go back down to row 24 here and we're going to skip these four stitches, one, two, three, four, and go into this next stitch right here. If you want to, you can count eight stitches in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and insert your hook into that eighth stitch. And then you should have the four stitches in between. And what we're going to do now is just hook this through, okay? We just hooked on our yarn from our ball of yarn, the two strands, hook that through and chain up one. And now we're going to single crochet into that same stitch and in the rest of the stitches on this row. Now you can single crochet over this loose end here, the straggler, so that you don't have to sew that in later if you don't want to. Uh, otherwise just crochet across here and then sew that in later. That's fine as well. But what I'm going to do now is just repeat what we did for that other side. This is the left side now. And we skipped these four stitches here because that is where the opening is going to be where our it's going to wrap around our ankle. So now I'm just going to single crochet in these last eight stitches, then chain one. And for rows two through 12, just single crochet across just like we did for the other side. So I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you up uh, before we fasten off. I'll meet you up because we are actually not going to fasten off right away and I'll show you what to do next. All right, just finished row 12 on this side now. So we have both of our sides done, but before we fasten this off, we have to attach the back here attach these two rows together so that this, then you can see that the ankle will fit around here. So what we're going to do is, let me make sure I'm on the right side here. Okay, so this piece you can see here, these two row, these are rows two, then four, six, eight. You can see them very uniform here. We want this to be the outside, okay, of our work. Okay, so if you flip this around, you can see that there's a little, there's a row one here, and then there looks like there's two rows, two rows, two rows. So there's this loner row here. This is the back side, okay? But if you flip it around, there's no loner row. It's just two, four, six, etc. Okay, so this is the outside right here, okay? So what we're going to do is flip these so the outside is facing each other. So this is the outside. So we're going to face them together. Okay. And we're going to put our hook in here. My lost my loop there. We are actually going to chain one first, 
just like that, and then turn this around here, okay? And we're gonna slip stitch across these stitches here. So go into this first stitch, okay, of this row, and then go into the first stitch of this layer as well. Then yarn over and pull through, and pull through that loop on your hook for a slip stitch. Okay, make sure you keep all your loops on your hook though. There we go. And then pull tight. Okay, and we're gonna do that all the way across. So go into this next stitch and into this next stitch on this piece here. Okay, just like that. Then yarn over, pull through everything and pull through the loop on your hook, just like that. So we're slip stitching in each stitch, each of these eight stitches. So go into this next stitch right here and the next stitch on this side right here. Then yarn over, pull through everything and through the loop on your hook. Okay, and I'm just gonna do that in each stitch. And I'll go a little faster here and you should be able to match up the stitches so it will be an even amount of the eight stitches across. And I have two stitches left here. Awesome. Then at this point we will fasten off. So let's chain one. Whoopsie, I lost my loops on this last one. Let me redo that real quick here. Just keep watching. We'll yarn over, pull through and through. And last stitch. There we go. Okay, so when you're ready to fasten off, let's just chain one and then cut your yarn. And actually, you can cut your yarn long if you want to, use that for sewing. So let's do that instead. So cut your yarn really long for sewing. We'll sew this to the sole of the uh, slipper here. So let's just pull it through this chain one here. Okay, so we'll sew this to our sole here. We're gonna flip this now because this is the inside. You can see it's really bulging out. If you straighten this out, you can see that seam. We don't want to see that seam, so we're gonna flip this over and then get this out of the way here so you can see that's nice and clean. Okay, so this is the outside and this is the inside. Okay, so that's what it should look like right now. So now what we're going to do is sew this to our sole, but we want to sew this inside out. So what we're going to do, again, flip it back like this, put it on the sole of your slipper here. So I grab this out and it doesn't matter which side it is which on this piece here, but this piece it does. This is the inside because you you can see where you slip stitched and you can see that's really bulging out. So you want to make sure that this in, it's inside out. We're going to sew this inside out. So let's put this together here and this on here. Okay, just like this. Grab your yarn needle. And we're sewing it inside out so that we don't see our sewing seam very well. Uh, when we put it right side out and I'll show you how to do that or how it looks later but uh, what we're gonna do here is just line up your stitches so line up the middle stitch on this row right here you can see the stitch right here one two three there's three stitches on this row right here we're gonna line it up we're gonna go into this stitch right here okay this first stitch and we're gonna go into this piece right on this side of it, okay? And right by the seam, okay, on this side of it. There we go. And then just pull. And we're just whip stitching, that's it. I don't, I'm not doing any specific like uh, mattress stitch or anything like that, I'm just whip stitching. And I'm gonna get this straggler out of the way here. So what you want to do, if you need to, you can pin this down. We're going to sew the seam up here so if you can see the whole thing here. There we go. We're going to seam it up along this edge all the way around. So you want to make sure that this, these three stitches on this sole match up with these three stitches on the front of your booty. 
of your, I'm saying booty, but it's a shoe or a slipper. So we want to sew up this whole side. So if you need to use pins or something to kind of keep it aligned, you can. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky to keep it all lined up, but you can do it and make sure to sew it nice and neatly. So we're just going to keep going through the same side. So I went through the sole first, so we're going to go through the sole and then through this upper part of the foot and just pull. And it's going to be a lot of yarn to work with at first, but when you keep going around and around, um, it'll be less and less to deal with. Okay, and then just go again through the same side. So go through the sole to the outer part of the slipper and just pull. Okay, and then again through the same side. So through the sole to the other outer part and pull. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way around and I'm not going to use pins but I'm going to line this up really well and just sew accordingly. So if it bunches up, it's going to bunch up in a little, in a few areas. I'm going to just hold it and just continue on. And you want to make sure you sew it nicely enough that there are no holes or no drafts, you know, when you put it on so that it's all sewn up nice and neatly and no toes are going to be poking out. So just do that all the way around and I will meet you up then. And also, I'm going to sew in these straggler ends. I'm just going to hide them underneath my stitches, sort of like how I showed you earlier when we did around the leg part um, with those bobble stitches or those cluster stitches. I'm just hiding that yarn underneath the stitches um, just to hide them and sew them in. That's what I'm going to do with these shorter, uh, shorter strands that are just hanging out. So I'm going to sew around this whole, uh, the sole and this top of this foot together. And once they're all attached, I'll meet you up because we still have to crochet around the ankle portion before we sew it to the top cuff. So I'll show you that next. All right, I just sewed all the way around this piece here. Now, to fasten this off, just like I showed you earlier, to fasten off things, we're going to go through two stitches here. Okay, go through that loop, back through that loop just like that, and then pull tight. And you can do that once or twice on this one. I'll do it twice. So go through, you can even keep your finger in that loop and then come back through that loop and then pull tight. Okay, and then just weave in all your loose ends at this point uh, if you have any left over. And then we still have to crochet around the edge or the ankle of this piece um, because we need to uh, be able to sew the stitches from the leg part to this. So I just sewed in that end there. I'm going to cut this and you can see here I sewed around this edge. Obviously this is the inside of the shoe because this looks really really bad around this edge. So what we're going to do is flip this right side out and shape it to be a slipper. And I mean, you can use this as like a base of any type of slipper, really. You could just leave it like this and have a nice little shoe booty for an adult, for somebody with a bigger foot. So you can see there's that back seam. You can see the edge of this is nice and clean on the outside. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so what we have to do though is crochet around this edge here. So I'm going to grab my hook. We're going to start in the back and we're just going to attach our yarn to this side of the seam. Okay, so just hook that on and pull it through. And then chain up one. And we're going to single crochet the same amount that you have on this piece all the way around in each stitch. So you have, I have 
35 stitches around here. So yours might be the same or different depending on what your foundation chain was. So I have 35 stitches around on this piece, so I want to single crochet evenly 35 stitches around this angle. So what I'm going to do is just basic single crochets exactly where we attached our yarn. We're going to go in, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. Okay, that's our first single crochet. Now, wherever your hook fits is where you should single crochet, but just keep in mind it needs to be the same amount of stitches on your row one of your leg piece. So like I said, I have 35 stitches on mine, so I need to make sure I have 35 single crochets on this round that I'm working on. And then once I have my 35 stitches around on this piece, I will meet you up, we'll fasten this off, we have to fasten off with a long tail for sewing, and then we'll sew this piece to the leg piece next. Alright, I just single crocheted 35 evenly around this ankle part, so now we're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet, not this chain up one, just go into the first single crochet stitch, then yarn over and pull through and pull, th oh, hook on both loops though, or both threads here, and pull through everything to slip stitch. And then to fasten off, we're going to chain one, we're going to cut our yarn long for sewing and pull it all the way through that chain one there and pull tight. Okay, so that's fastened off. Now we want to attach this piece to this piece like this so that it is a boot like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this strand. We're actually going to put everything inside out. I always like to just sew my stuff inside out so you don't see any weird... Um, sewing lines because you can see it on the inside here how it just looks a little a little much there so you don't want that to be on the outside so I just flip this inside out and flip this inside out if you can there we go it's quite stretchy material so you sh should be good okay just make sure that you're sewing this part here this piece to this piece. You don't want to sew your cuff, your ribbing here where we did the front and back post stitches. You want that to be at the top. So you want to be able to sew this piece like this to this piece. And you want to sew this, you can see the seam here. You want the seam to be at the back. So we're going to put this toward the back like this. And that's where we're going to start. So let's yarn our needle with this long strand that we just cut from the shoe part here. Okay, and then we're just going to go in each stitch around. So go into, where's the first stitch here, right here. Go into this stitch and into this stitch. Okay. And we're just going to go in each stitch around. So this one, each corresponding one. Because you have the same amount of stitches on both pieces now. So it shouldn't be too difficult. We're just going in and doing a whip stitch. Going in this piece, out this piece. And pull. Then next stitch, this piece, and this piece. Then pull. Okay, so do that all the way around, and once I'm finished with that, I'll show you how to fasten this off, and we can put this right side out. Alright, once you finish sewing all the way around, just fasten this off like I showed you earlier. Just go in a couple of the stitches, keep your finger in there, and then come back through and pull tight. And I'm going to do that twice on this one as well, just to reinforce this. Go. Okay, and then just sew in this end and make sure all the rest of your ends are sewn. But that's the slipper, so all you have to do is just rewind this whole video and make another one to match. There's no right or left foot. These are fitted like socks, so they will fit you either foot. Um, and just pull this and make sure it comes out to be right side out. When you are done, 
Okay, just like that. And there it is. Awesome. So just make another one of this. Um, the slippers match to match, just like that. And there they are. The winter chic slippers are complete. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns and Marley Bird for providing this yarn today. Big thank you to my dad for filming, editing, and doing the photography for these lovely slipper socks. And thanks to you for watching. Make sure to share your photos on Facebook and Instagram. Hashtag Yarn Utopia. Hashtag Red Heart Yarns. Chic Sheep. This is such a fun and easy project, and I had a lot of fun making it, and I just absolutely love this yarn. It is so soft. You guys have to get on this and get this yarn. And there's so many colors. There's 24 colors right now, so make sure to go check out the other colors that are available on redheart.com. So thanks, everybody. Happy hooking!